Hi there, hope you're having a good day. Welcome back to another video. I've been looking forward to this one for months, and today we'll be talking about the Adidas Harden Volume 8. So retail price remains at 160 US dollars, same as the Harden Volume 7. Uh, the black and orange one is the first colorway launched, and then they're slowly rolling them out on uh, different dates. Next up, I think the green one is nice too, with a little bit of pink on the bottom. I feel like Adidas has accomplished what they were attempting to do with the Kobe series there, like more than 20 years ago. This time with the modern tech and great functionality. Yeah, they've been teasing us ever since like last summer. They're really hitting the right spots in terms of design. I personally think the Volume 8 is one of the best looking hoop shoes in a while. The three stripes rounding up the heel, sexy. But you know, if you have a hater at home. Anyways, let's get right into the most important stuff how it performs on the court, and if this shoe is worth our weight or worth the money. I don't want to sound like um, yeah, you're not getting anything with the packaging. And my very first impression holding the shoes was that it feels cheap. And I'll say it again, it feels really cheap and almost flimsy, especially the carrier part. No smooth texture on it or premium feeling in hand. Quality control kind of sucks with the gluing stitching and all that. I looked at a few different pairs and they're hit or miss. Just so you know, so you don't get turned down or anything. But it has nothing to do with the functionality. And performance wise, it features a full length jet boost. This time it is confirmed by Adidas officially. They've been putting out the wrong setup information themselves with the AE1 and Troyang 3. That was very strange and confusing. But as to how these feel on feet, they're pretty bouncy. You do get a smooth transition, but it feels just like boost to me. The heel presses down by a decent amount. You get enough impact protection and four foot cushion to go with it. I was worried that this might turn out to be a very bulky shoe, but it really isn't. While it is still heavy, not a surprise coming from Adidas. For size 10 and a half, they come in at about 490 grams, close to the 500 gram mark, which sounds crazy, but because of the outer shell or half empty carrier thing, um, it actually feels lighter and faster compared to the Volume 7 with the puffer jacket design. And I have to mention, the step-in comfort was amazing. Very cozy, thanks to the stretchy collar, and it's not a shoe that requires a long break-in time. Traction was one of the best parts about the Harden Volume 8. You can't really go wrong with this type of a herringbone pattern with some pots. Uh, this translucent part didn't seem fitting at first. I guess these are a bunch of the letter H's, like H for Harden, maybe? Oh, and um, on the entire shoe, there's no visible branding, really. In terms of how it grips, it performs just like the previous version, the Harden Volume 7. It does squeak, not like crazy, but this also will get the job done for sure. Here, we had like two really nice days out after some soul storms last week. So I started using these outdoors a little bit too. Dust pickup and durability, so far so good but we'll have to see. On an indoor dusty court, this is top tier trash. They basically gave us the safe pattern uh, where it matters. Uh, the middle part in the forefoot feels a lot softer in hand than the other areas, but the rubber in general should be sturdy enough. With the fit, I went true to size, and true to size was right on for me. The sock color is basically identical to that on the Volume 7. Stretchy, not too hard to put on. You for sure won't have any heel slippage back there, but there is some dead space up front. If you have really narrow or slim feet, you can probably manage a half size down in these. But sizing up kind of defeats the purpose, in my opinion, to have a shoe like this with the way it wraps around your feet. Width-wise, they're good to go for wide footers. I don't recall any recent Adidas shoe that's too narrow, actually. Materials, like I said, you're not getting a premium touch, but there's no pinching or discomfort anywhere. Not a very flexible upper, but torsional support really isn't the best. Uh, there were some instances where my feet felt a little bit shaky inside, either on a hard stop that I did on purpose or just from trying to move around sideways. The carrier is definitely going to be softer than you expected, so there's not much holding your feet in place aside from the extension of the textile sock collar, if you think about it. 
small issue with the stability, let's say. Nothing too serious. Like if I didn't move around like that on purpose to test it, I wouldn't feel it. For those with extremely flat feet like myself, I did get a little bit of soreness uh, towards the end of a longer sesh. So just keep that in mind. Overall, I think you're getting a great package altogether with the Harden Volume 8. Cushion didn't wow me, but it also didn't disappoint. Traction is excellent. Comfort exceeded my expectations. These sock collar shoes that they've been doing are just cozy and fun to play in. My only concern is a tiny bit of dead space in the toe box. And in general, your feet might be moving around inside a little bit more than you're liking, especially if you like a very snug and secure fit. Like even if the width and lens are right on, the upper construction still creates some dead space during intense movements, if that makes sense. But again, I'm absolutely loving how these go on feet. Plenty of amazing colorways to come. So I would say yes, this is worth the money. As always, I'd love to hear what you think about the new hardens down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.